pray for strength, strength of our pastor, strength for those that are watching. We pray that you would be the peace, peace, peace in our mind. Be Jehovah Shalom, peace in our hearts, peace in our homes, over our families. Lord, we lift our families up to you, even those that have lost loved ones. We pray that you would give them strength and peace and joy and love. We give you praise and we honor you. We magnify your name and we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Pure and holy. Tried and true.
glad you tuned in tonight. I believe there's a word for you and I want you to listen with your heart. Listen to what the Lord is saying to us tonight. Minister Wilma Last is going to start out with this scripture and then we're going to take it further in our teaching. start our scripture tonight in Matthew 24. Matthew 24 starting at verse 1, Pastor? Okay. Uh, 3. Verse 3. Starting at Matthew 24 and verse 3. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and many, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold. But he, hallelujah, that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Amen to the reading of the word. Amen. Amen. We praise God for that word. And truly we understand that this is the end times. This is... The, the end times and we see a lot of things happening uh, in this day and age we see a lot of things that are taking place in the world there are pestilence in the land there are wars and rumors of wars and there are earth, earthquakes in diverse places There's there are many things that are happening in the land now there are sickness and disease that's running rampant through the land and Lives are being lost in this season. And the Bible tells us that when you see these things coming, uh, it tells us not to fear. Um, the saints don't have to be afraid of it because we've already accepted uh, the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. And because of that, um, when he does come back, we're going to go back with him. And so we're grateful of that. Uh, but the world, uh, we can see with the different things that are going on in this world that the world is coming to an end. Uh, we can see that uh, the end times are in it right now. The end times are right now. And Jesus is soon to come. Now, when I was a young young boy, they would preach that. And, and they would preach it. Oh, Jesus is coming. Jesus is and I mean, they would tune up and they would yell it and they would scream it and they would uh, uh, they would tell us and preach us uh, under the pew preaching that Jesus was coming. And and it, it I, as a, a young child, I didn't know that it didn't mean that he was he wasn't coming the next week. 
you know, uh, but I stayed with it. I stayed with the teaching. I stayed with uh, what they were telling us, and I believed it. And then I, I got mature, and I started to read in my word, in the word of God, in my Bible, that Jesus was soon to come. And I and by faith, I just believed that thing. And so I started to, at the age of 16, uh, uh, and, and the same thing with our bishop. He got saved at 16 and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And at the age of 16, I went to church one Tuesday night. This is when we were having Bible class and tarrying service. And I went one Tuesday night and not really expecting to receive uh, the Spirit of God with the infilling of the Holy Ghost. But I went and, uh, and, and they asked anybody, they asked us that were there, do you want to be saved? And do you want to be filled with the the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And so I made up my mind. I just didn't know I made my mind up. But I went to the altar and there was one spot just for me. There was one spot. It seemed like all the altar was taken. It seemed like all the altar was full. And I was a little guy back then. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all don't laugh at me now. I was a small guy. And so I, I could fit in that little spot. And so they taught us that we should tarry and tarry. We know that it only means to wait. Right now, we're tarrying for the Lord to come. Amen. We're waiting for the coming of the Lord. And so we, we called on Jesus. They taught us how to call on Jesus. And we called on Jesus. And we stayed there. My mother was there. My grandmother was there. My godmother was there. Look at all those moms right there supporting me and pushing me. And they, they would say, call on Jesus. Call him faster. Call him louder. Call him faster. Call him faster. Call him <laughs> And so they, they taught us that uh, this is what it takes, and, and that's what it took for me. I don't know what it takes for you, but I know that's what it took for me. I know that the Lord, even at 16, had to get some stuff out of me. And so when he filled me with his pre precious Holy Ghost and with the Spirit of the Lord, then I began to speak in tongues, of course. And then I began to walk in the newness, newness of life. I, I began to change my way of living, change my approach of, of to life and change my way of thinking and change the way that I operate. Even at 16, I was a mess. Even at 16, yes, I was a mess. I was a mess at 14. I got my nephew here. Uh, he's 14 now. And I was a mess. Amen. I, because I was a sinner and I wasn't saved and I didn't believe on Jesus like the scripture said. But when I believed on Jesus and he saved me and filled me with his spirit, then I had an understanding that I want to go back with Jesus when he comes back. And so I got in my word and I started to study. I got in Matthew 24 and I started to read what he was saying about the end times, because when Jesus comes back, it doesn't matter if he come back and I'm in my 50s, 60s or 70s. I want to be ready. Amen. It doesn't matter if he comes back, if he had come back when I was in my 20s or 30s. I wanted to be ready. I wanted to be saved. I wanted to go back with him and spend eternity with Jesus Christ. I understand the kingdom. I wanted to go back and I wanted to live life in, in heaven with my with my family that's gone on before us, with the four and twenty elders, when I sing about it, when I when I heard them preach about it, when I heard them talk about it, I wanted to experience what they were talking about, and so I was glad now that I was filled with the Spirit of God, and now I made that choice, and that when Jesus comes back, I RSVP. I'm I'm ready, y'all. I made my reservations for the Lord's coming and for His return. That when He comes back, His stamp is on me. When he comes back, his name is on me. When he comes back, his blood is on me. When he comes back, he recognizes me as one of his own. Oh, that's good. That's good right there. He recognizes me as one of his own. Now, we can talk about uh, all the different things that the Bible mentions about the end times and what will happen in the end times, and you can see it for yourself. You can see it for yourself. People are killing one another. People are dying in the streets. You can see it for yourself. You can see it all around you. You can turn on the television uh, each day and you will see what we call bad news. You can see that there's bad news on the, on the, on the television. There's bad news on the internet. There's bad news on Facebook. You can see the bad news 
that's happening in our land. And so we don't have to keep preaching the bad news. Our job is to continue to preach the good news. Tell somebody, preach the good news. And to talk about the goodness of the Lord. And to talk about how can I be saved in the midst of turmoil. So Sunday I talked about a miracle in the mess. Sunday I talked about a miracle in the mess. Uh, I, see, I see that, Sister Lassie, you, you, you have on there RSVP. Come on, can you can you can you give me some of that right there? RSVP means that the host has requested that the guest respond to a say if they plan to attend the party. Woo! One more time. RSVP means the host has requested that the guest respond to say if they plan to attend the party. Uh, do you plan to attend the party? Do you plan to... It's going to be a party. Now, you think you're partying over here. You think you're partying on this side. But on the other side, there's going to be a party that will never end. Come on, we're going to party for eternity. Yeah. Uh, a prince said we're going to party to 1999. We're going to party past way... <laughs> this, I'm talking eternity. How long is eternity? Forever. We're going to party forever. But not so for the ones, the wicked ones, and the one that is chose to uh, uh, lay in sin and live in sin. Not so for you. I'm sorry uh, to, that, that, to, to bear that news to you. You're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. And so you have to choose Christ as your personal Savior. You have to choose Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have to choose Jesus Christ as the one that will lead you and guide you unto all truth. You have to accept him as your Savior and as your King. The Bible tells us that he is the King of kings and he is the Lord of lords. And so you have to accept him and embrace him as your Lord because we're in a mess. There's a mess all around us. There's trouble all around us. There's trouble uh, in the streets. There's trouble in our schools. There's corruption and trouble uh, in our government. There's trouble all around us. And I know I'm teaching. I'm getting a little excited, but there's trouble everywhere. Amen. There's trouble. We live in the midst of trouble. And the more we live, the darker the world becomes. The more we live, the dark, more darkness comes on the face of the earth. There's a prince that's out there. He is the prince of the airways. He's the prince of the airways. His name is Satan. His name is, is, is the devil. And he wants to steal and kill and destroy everyone he can before the coming of Christ. That's one. But not only before the coming of Christ, he wants to kill, steal, and destroy you now. And so thank God for grace. Thank God for mercy. Somebody ought to just pause and send up some thank you, Jesus, right there. Somebody ought to just pause and just send up, Lord, we're grateful right there. Because God saw fit to have mercy on us. He saw fit to have mercy on me. How many of you got that testimony? He saw fit to love us and to pull us out of a mess and save us. Therefore, because he pulled us out of the mess, we don't see things as the world see things. We don't see things as the wicked people see things. We don't see things as evil people see things, but we see things from the goodness of the Lord perspective. Amen. And though we're in the midst of trouble and though we're in the midst of a mess, we see things from the perspective that God is still good. Even when your finances is funny, it said they say your money is funny and your change is strange. Even when your finances are funny, even when you're between jobs and you're trying to, uh, you're wondering where the next paycheck is coming from. Am I talking to somebody out there? You're wondering where the next piece of change is going to come from. Amen. And God sends an angel. He sends a blessing. He sends a blessing and God is ready to send a blessing for you that is expecting something from God. You're expecting, although you're in the middle of trouble and you're in the middle of a mess and tribulation is all around. It's in our neighborhood, y'all. I don't care if I move to West Bloomfield. I don't care if I move to Bloomfield Hills. It's trouble still around me. And so because of that, I choose to look at life from God's perspective. What is God's perspective? That the goodness of the Lord is in my house. <laughs> what is God's perspective? The goodness of the Lord is in my house. 
There's a miracle with my name on it. I just believe that thing. I trust God. I trust God. He says to trust in the Lord. Uh, 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 trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lean not to thine own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he shall direct you. He's going to direct you. He's going to direct you where you should go. He's going to direct you what you should say. He's going to direct you in what you should do. God is trying to direct us. He wants to direct you. Some of us don't like direction. <laughs> I remember uh, we were we go to the conventions, what, three times a year, maybe four times a year. Sometimes we would go to the diocese meetings. And uh, um, this is before we had GPS and uh, Bishop Laster, I'm, I'm not telling on him, but, um, you know, and don't call him after after this. But he would, you know, him and my mom would be talking, Evangelist Jacqueline Laster, and some, some kind of way, although we were going to the same place, these multiple times a year, we would lose our direction somewhere. And so they would they would they would not get into an argument, but they would get into a debate about where they should go. Come on, somebody. And so they would lose their direction. That's before we had GPS. We that's before we had the Tom Tom and you could look at that and get your get your guidance and your wherever you were going. That was before we had all of that. And it, before we had it on our phone. Uh, uh, and so we would get lost. <laughs> and, and so, you know, if you know Bishop. If you know my dad, you understand that he doesn't like to be late. Can I get a witness somebody on Facebook and Instagram, wherever you may be watching? Bishop Laster Sr., Bishop Charles Laster Sr., do not like to be late. I'm talking, when I say late, I mean an hour before time is on time for the bishop. Amen. Praise God. God bless him. God bless him. Hallelujah. God bless him. And so we were late and it was church time, somebody. And so, you know, when Bishop is, is when it's church time, he gets a little antsy. He, so, you know, his, his voice got a little raised and uh, we back in the back singing and we had Rand Salen going and then uh, and, and we would hear Bishop say, uh, Jackie, and that that just ended it all. That ended everything. And and so some people, uh, uh, especially married couples, sometimes the man don't like the directions when the wife is given. You know, I don't know if anybody out there like that. But uh, uh, we got GPS and then I got my wife. And then if, if my sister Christy's in the car, that means I got three GPS systems. Watch it now. Oh, Watch oh okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me, let me move on from that. But some people don't like directions. And so God is giving us direction. He's giving us direction in our word to get back to him. Tell somebody you got to get back to God. You got to get back to God before it's ever lasting too late. I thank God for the pandemic. I thank God for the stay at home, stay safe. Because it, 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 it let me see myself. Pastor. Oh. We got a question from a teenager. A you got a question, question from a teenager. Let's see, we are in Bible class. I, I got excited, y'all, so excuse me. Uh, let's see what this question is saying. He's, the person asks, can the devil steal you on your path to heaven? Ooh, man. Oh, um, that's a good question. Well, see, he comes to steal, the Bible says, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The, the number one weapon that the enemy uses is distraction. So I, I would say it like this, and I would answer that question like this. If he can distract you, then he can steal from you. Uh, I, I was watching a video the other day, and uh, they distracted the, the, the cashier from what she was doing. And when she turned away, they were able to steal the tips off the counter. Some of y'all saw that same thing. And so when, when the enemy can distract you, he can steal from you. And when he steals from you, he can kill you. When he steals what when he steals your joy, when he steals your peace, yes, he can distract you and he can he can while you're on your pathway to heaven because some of us have made a choice. And I'm gonna get back to my topic when I was talking about being at home. It's it's beautiful to be at home because we can spend more time in prayer. We can spend more time. I was uh uh, uh the Lord woke me up at about three oh eight. I looked at the clock. And I, I, I couldn't sleep and I was saying, it's time to pray. 
It's time to go pray. Amen. And so I got my prayer shawl and I went downstairs into my prayer area and my, my prayer chambers, whatever you want to call it, my secret place, my closet, whatever you want to call it. That's where I went and I started to talk to God and I started to commune with God. Yes, if you're not in that place, the enemy can steal your joy. If you're not in that place, the enemy can distract you uh, from your, your focus on Jesus. We have to focus on Jesus. Therefore, the enemy cannot steal or kill on our pathway to heaven. Amen. That's good. John 10 and 10. What does it say? The thief cometh but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, life. and that they might have it more <laughs> abundantly. Hey. God has come, Jesus has come to give us life and that we might have life more abundantly. But there's a thief. There is a thief in the land. That's why he, he's trying to uh, distract you and destroy you and kill you. That's why he's trying to do that so that you won't see the goodness of the Lord, so that you won't make it into the kingdom. Amen. So we have, we have to press past even what the enemy tries to tell us, what he tries to uh, uh, sow those things in our ears, sow, sow seeds of, of confusion in our ears. He tries to tell us little, little things just like he did Eve in the garden. He tries to tell us things that will distract us or deceive us from seeing God's goodness. The enemy is a liar. The devil is a liar. He is a liar. And there is a devil. Just like there's a heaven and a hell, and you won't miss both. I promise you that. Father of lies. He is a liar and the father of lies. And so he's here. His, he's on his job. <laughs> Are you on your job? Your, what is your job? You, I hear you asking the question, what is your job? Your job is to pray. Your job is to seek the face of God. Your job is to get into the face of God, not just his hand. His hand is his provision, but his face is his presence. His face is his glory. His face is who he is. And the more we seek God for who he is, the more we look like him. Come on. The more we become a reflection of of him the more he becomes a proud father because he's already a good father but let's make him a proud father and get ourselves ready for his return amen so i thank god for that i thank god that i'm saved and filled with the holy ghost i thank god that i'm ready when jesus comes that i'm ready to go back with him uh, I, I, I heard about the streets of gold. I've heard about the stories untold. I heard about uh, uh, the angels singing. And y'all know I love me some music. Y'all know I love when if you were to look into my blood, you will see music notes. Boom, 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 boom. Jumping around in my blood. I love me some music. Just like I love God. I love music. And so when I get to heaven, I'm looking forward to joining the choir. And I, I love the elders of the church. And I love uh, 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 the four and 20 elders. And, and, and uh, when I get to heaven, I'm looking forward to seeing the elders. I'm also looking forward to seeing, I may not know her, but I'm looking forward to seeing my grandmother. I'm looking forward to seeing another grandmother and a great grandmother. I'm looking forward to seeing my mama. I'm looking forward to directing and getting involved in the choir where we'll be singing 20 24 7 there as a matter of fact we won't even know 24 7 there will be no end there will be no clock nobody can stop the worship come on the worship will be going around the throne and we oh my god we will be crying holy 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 with the angels we will join the angels and we will sing holy 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 is the lamb of god and so i i'm getting prepared to meet jesus again and to see his face again I don't know if, about you if you're getting prepared, but I, I encourage you to get prepared with all the things that are going around on this earth and in this world. All the trouble, the pestilence, the sickness, the disease, the things that are uh, running rampant through this earth and through this world that we live in. It's not just in our nation. It's in other nations. And so what are you going to do? While you're in this season, what are you going to do? Are you going to turn away from God or are you going to turn to God? And so I choose and I pray that you choose to turn to God. I pray that you choose to seek after God. 
I pray that you choose to be like the tree planted by the rivers of water that will bring forth fruit in this season. And whatsoever you do shall prosper. I'm in Psalms 1. I pray that you do that. And I pray that you don't be like the wicked and that God cuts you off. Let's not be like the wicked. Let's be like the righteous. He called us to be righteous. He called us to be holy. Let's be holy. Sister Lassie. And and Pastor Charles, you, you stopped at, at, at Matthew uh, verse 13. But if you read verse 14, mm -hmm. it what says, it say? And this gospel of the kingdom Woo! shall be preached in all the world mm. for a witness unto all nations. Mm. And then shall the end come. Then shall the end come. Then shall the end come when this gospel is preached four corners of the world to all people. When the gospel is preached in their languages, in their languages, the gospel will be preached. Then comes the end of the earth. Then comes the end of this world that we know. And so I want to be ready. I want you to be ready. And so I'm praying for you now. Father, we thank you for all those that are watching, all those that are listening. We pray that they will come to know you. We pray that they would repent, and turn from their ways, and accept you as their Lord and Savior. We pray that their lives will be changed, restored, revived, and renewed. Work a miracle in their life, the miracle of salvation. And then if they're sick and afflicted in their bodies, God, we pray that you will heal them from any infirmities and disease. We pray that you will heal them and wash them clean. We pray that they will rise up and walk and sin no more. We give you praise. We give you thanks for these things in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. That's our Bible class. That's our Wednesday night worship and, and teaching and Hopefully you enjoyed yourself and hopefully you enjoyed watching. Um, I got excited and I don't know how long I went, but uh, I could have went longer. Y'all know that. <laughs> Y'all know I could have I could have went way longer than that. But um, I just wanted to give you something Bishop assigned us to teach tonight. And so I just wanted to give you that tonight. And hopefully you received it in Jesus name and you received it in love. And, um, so just to note that we're praying for you. Um, if God has given it to you to sow, to bless the ministry, please do so. Um, we're going to give you the cash app. So, Celeste, if you can do that. If the Lord has laid it on your heart to give and to sow into this ministry, you can give by phone if you call this number, 313 Three nine four nine three nine seven. Your information will be kept confidential, and that information is not stored uh, with Greater Pentecostal Temple. Or you can go to our Cash App at dollar sign Greater PT twenty sign twenty ten dollar sign Greater PT G R E A T E R P T twenty ten. Or you can even use the U.S. mail and mail it to 15932 East Warren, 15932 East Warren Avenue, that's Detroit, Michigan, 48224. And just know, if you sow into this ministry, you are sowing into good ground. That's right. I've sown so many times and sometimes I've given and it felt like... You know, it was my last, and it felt like I, I, I had to say, ouch. <laughs> but when I did that, God gave it back. You can't be God-given, no matter how hard you try. Whatever I sold, God gave it back a hundredfold. He doubled it. He tripled it. Come on. He did me better than I can do him. <laughs> he did me much better. And so I'm grateful for that. And so give from the bottom of your heart whatever God puts on your heart to give. And we thank you for that. I'll sing the song and we'll go home. I'm already home, y'all. Bless y'all. 
soon be over. We'll see you again. As a matter of fact, tune in Friday. We'll see you then on Zoom. God bless you. We love all of you. God bless you and may he be with you. May his peace be with you in Jesus name. Amen.